I recently bought a box set with Mothra, the 8 man Matango and Goke. So let's spin the wheel to see which of these films I'm going to cover next. Oh, right. As I have already noted somewhere else, Takeshi Kimura was a piece of work and could probably ring the whole mood of the room down with his presence. This was reflected in the many sci-fi movies he penned for Toho, often darker and more serious than the rest of the studio's crowd. But despite his many and somewhat unique contributions to their catalog, Kimura never cared much about the movies he helped create, seeing his film writing jobs just as a means to pay his bills. The exception of this was 1963's Matango, which the writer considered to be the finest of his works. And I must agree, this one is really something. The movie takes its basic premise from William H. Hodgson's short story A Voice in the Night, about a ship that ends up stranded on a deserted island full of addictive fungi that slowly turn those who consume them into horrendous monsters. That's the basic premise, at least. Matango is a considerably expanded interpretation of the same idea, enlarging the cast of characters from just the couple of the original story to seven quite diverse individuals at constant odds to one another. A chance that gives the whole story much more gravitas not only than its source material, but from the whole lot of Toho sci-fi movies. This is quite substantially the most tense and character-driven of all the Tokusatsu flicks the studio ever done, relying heavily in the character dynamics over, say, the characters against their environment. At the core of the drama is a group of people that would never, ever in their real life come even close of each other, and were only together in the first place because of monetary duty after the wealthy kids from Tokyo decided to go on a boat trip across the Pacific. Once the situation becomes extreme and they are forced to actually interact with each other, that's when it becomes clear these people are more different than they could have ever imagined. By the end of the story, the gap that separated each of them had only widened, resulting in the almost complete demise of the castaways. This is really not a fun kind of story, not the kind with heroes you will root for. Which means everyone here is either a bastard or ultimately good but extremely weak. These flaws contributing to them getting killed one by one, doing stupid shit that ends in death after letting desperation and distress build up to the limit. The distrust part of it all is particularly interesting since it carries underlining themes of class struggle. Some of the low-income sailors seem to nourish a thinly veiled disdain towards the wealthy city folk, with this unspoken divide fueling a lot of the conflict throughout the movie. According to Wikipedia, Takashi Kimura was a member of the Japanese Communist Party, and with this in mind, I've always tried to find socialist rhetoric in his stories, mostly to no avail. Like I said, the guy didn't care much about his writing gigs, so it is unlikely he went to the trouble of infusing them with his worldviews. Matango is really the exception in this case, going above the usual cynicism that became associated with Kimura's work, being charged with a much more thought-out breed of social commentary. And I'm not even talking about Marxism here. These are tales about people who lost everything, their only chance of survival being the consumption of something that will slowly but surely erase everything that makes them, well, them. It is not difficult to read the whole thing as an allegorical accounting of Japan's experience with forced westernization following World War II, something observed and felt by Japanese people of all classes and political dispositions. It was also, and now I'm talking Marxism, something which the benefits were not being equally distributed among the common folk, as evidenced by our main cast. The wild transformation Japan went through is put on display both in the film's opening and closing shots, each mirroring the other on their showcasing of a neon-clad Tokyo. The first time around, 
it may seem like an innocent stabbing shot of the present day setting. Once you reach the end of the journey though, the landscape will now have acquired a new and somewhat melancholic meaning for you. It is proof of how much better constructed Matangu is when compared to Toho's other offerings from the period. It is not just different, it is an improved experience indeed. More tense and humane, not to mention thought provoking. The only thing that knocked this movie down a couple pegs is the last stage of the Mushroom People's transformation. Through most of the flick, the effect the consumption of the titular fungus have on the characters is limited to rashes on their skins. The worst we see is a person with its face covered in blisters. The makeup is effective and done well enough for some people to have considered it in bad taste, as it uncomfortably resembled the burn suffered by victims of the atomic bombings. However, towards the end of the film, we get a look of the more metamorphized mushroom people, and they look like crap. If it wasn't enough that these costumes appear to come from a completely different film, a much goofier one, they are also ugly as all same, being rubbery and unconvincing. This must be the worst costumes I've ever seen in a Toho movie, and considering they are revealed at the supposedly tense climax of the film, they almost ruined the whole thing for me. But just almost. The truth is that the good outweighs the admittedly feel bad. And in the end, Matangu stands out as the most unique of Toho's tokusatsu from that period, revealing that Takeshi Kimura could do more than just cynicism for cynicism's sake, architecting gut-wrenching drama and thoughtful social critique that elevates this film from the rest. At the time though, this wasn't how this film was perceived, with critics and audience alike being less than impressed with the whole experience. It was quickly forgotten by most except the most hardcore of tokusatsu aficionados. Those who saw it, though, never quite forgot the gloomy atmosphere of what is one of Toho's and Japan's essential sci-fi films, full of body horror scenes and a plot reflecting real-world social problems, a combination that grandfather later works like Tetsuo the Iron Man, for those of you freaks who actually like this sort of thing. I am sorry for taking so long to make this one, and thank you for your patience. Next time will probably be another one of these, so stay tuned. Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. Keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth!